All right, we're gonna learn about and or inverter design uh, using uh, truth tables and, uh, or converting truth tables to logic expressions. So looking at this guy here, this is just an overview of what we're gonna do. You're gonna learn how to construct a truth table. Uh, you're gonna learn how to write SOP or sum of product statements uh, from a truth table. Uh, you're gonna create a truth table given a SOP logic expression, so we're reversing what we were talking about a second ago, and create a truth table from a design scenario. Okay, if that doesn't sound like it makes sense, well, hopefully it will soon. All right, so the purpose of a truth table is to kind of investigate uh, or determine uh, what will happen with all the different combinations that can happen, uh, or well, from the input standpoint. So. If we have three inputs, we're looking at all the different possibles of zeros and ones that could be inputted in to that aspect of the circuit, okay? So um, when we go ahead and design our truth table, the number of combinations will be determined by the number of inputs. So if we have n inputs, okay, we will have two to the n input combinations. So that's how many um, rows we will need in our truth table. Um, so, um, the inputs, oh yeah, so those are all going to be listed in binary order. We'll show what that means in a second. That actually makes it a lot easier to create the truth table. And the outputs are listed in the columns to the right. So we have all our inputs to the left. And right now you're going to be looking at scenarios that only have one output, but several outputs are a possibility. And we look at those later. Now, one thing to note about the outputs on the tables we're going to be looking at, at least uh, in most of the examples here, is that the outputs really are just made up outputs, okay? They're, they're not coming from anywhere. They're just made up outputs so that we can practice writing equations. Um, and then on the last two slides where we do, uh, or last few slides where we do a scenario or two, you can kind of see how you create the outputs, all right? All right, so here's a good example of a truth table. Um, the first three uh, variables we have there are inputs. And then the last one, the F, this is F1 in this case, is our output column, okay? So in the input column, notice um, we have three inputs. So remember what we said a second ago, that means we'll have two to the third combinations, okay? That would be eight. So notice that we have eight rows going on here. All right. So that's where the two to the nth, where n is the number of uh, inputs, comes into play. Um, now notice that the numbers in each one of these rows, okay, is just counting in binary. That would be zero. That'd be one. That's two in binary. Three in binary and so on and so forth, okay? So when you're setting this up, those tables are just basically counting by binary zero through, in this case, since there's eight rows, that would be zero through seven, all right? Um, there was something else I was going to talk about right there. Oh, the pattern. So when I fill in the truth table, I just do it this way, okay? So look at this. So this goes on your input farthest to the right, it goes zero, oh, that's not what I wanted to use, my bad. It goes zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, okay? And the next column over, it's zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and then in this one, it's four zeros, four ones. So if you can kind of memorize those patterns, and you can imagine the next column, if we had another one, if there was four inputs, would be eight zeros followed by, yes, eight ones, okay? So uh, just kind of memorizing that pattern will help you fill in the inputs a little quicker when you have to set it up, because the input side is the same thing every time. It's just the numbers counting through in binary. Now the output, like I said here, these outputs over on this side, right here, those are all just made up, okay? Those are all just random zeros and ones there. Uh, so don't try to read into that. There's nothing to read into there. 
And here's an example of some of the different truth tables we'd be looking at. So if we have two inputs, uh, that's the first truth table you see there. Uh, notice that two to the fourth or two to the second power uh, would be four combinations, okay? Because we have two to the number of inputs. Uh, for the three inputs, that's two to the third power. We have eight combinations, so we have eight rows. And then two to the fourth for four inputs gets kind of crazy because we got 16 combinations then. All right, so that's what those truth tables look like. All right, now it's time for the big show, okay? This is, uh, this is where you're going to learn how to write an equation, a logic expression, based off a truth table. And so the first thing we have to do is learn how to write a min term. And we only are worried, since we're doing a sum of products, we're only going to worry about where we see a 1 occurring on our truth table. All right. So uh, in this case, we're going to go down here. And we're going to look at this guy. And so where we're going to be focusing our attention is anywhere we see a 1 on this output part of the truth table. Okay. Now where I see that 1 occurring, I'm going to write an expression next to it called the min term. Okay. And the min term is actually determined by those zeros and 1s over there next to the 1. Okay, so if we look, here we go. This is where we're going to get our first min term from. All right. And depending upon whether it's a 0 or 1, we'll determine what we write to the side there. So, for example, I'm going to zoom in on this guy. Okay. Um, this guy is a 0, and this is the x value, right, for this first one. So this would be not x. Okay. This guy would be not y. But notice the last one is a 1, so this would be z, okay? So essentially, the scenario we're talking about here is not x and not y and z, okay? That is when this circuit will output a 1, when all three of those different things are occurring, when x is off, y is off, and z is on. All right, so that's one scenario where this circuit will be on, okay? And then we're going to go down and we're going to do the same thing for everywhere we see a 1. All right, so for this next one down, we have not x, y, z. So this would be not x and y and z. All right, now looking at the next one down. We have x, not y, and not z. All right, so that's our expression there. x and not y and not z. So when I have that exact combination there, and by the way, the little bar over the top of the letter means not. Okay, that's how we read that. Um, so that combination there, though, is another scenario where the circuit will output a 1, okay? If x is on and y and z are off, then my circuit is supposed to output a 1, all right? And then our last one down here, we have x, y, not z, okay? So that's x, y, not z, all right? And so there's all four of our min terms. That's all four places that you see a one on that table. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to put together one statement that says basically when this circuit should output a one. Okay, and when should it output a one? Well, in any one of those cases. So it could output a one when it's, what's our first one? Not x and not y and z. Okay, so that's a combination uh, where the first one would occur. Or, that's, by the way, that's the symbol for or. Okay. The and, notice we don't put something, we, it's basically a multiplication symbol in there. Okay, that's why it's called a product of sums, because the product, these are ands. Okay, and the plus signs actually represent ors. Okay, so the next thing, so it's 
not x and not y and z is one scenario when it's turned on or another time it could be turned on is not x y and z or another case where it could be on is if it's x not y and not z or the last scenario uh, x y not z and not z okay so that is my sop logic expression that expression there so it tells the circuit or well the person who's reading that i guess uh, it says when that circuit will be on. It could be this scenario here, or this scenario, or this scenario, or this scenario. Okay, and in each one of those midterms, it's an and statement. It's, you know, for this last one here, it has to be X and Y and not Z. It has to be that specific combination occurring in order for that circuit to output a one. All right, so we have an example here. We're gonna do this again. Uh, I'd like you to try to pause the video here for a second, see what you come up with, and um, see if it matches what I have. All right, here's the answer you should have gotten, the midterms I have written down the side, and then the total SOP expression that you should have created. A couple things, well, of course, check all your midterms and everything, make sure everything's going on. But one thing real quick, okay, those bars across the top there, those have to remain separate. If those become one solid bar, that becomes a different statement. There's a difference between not A and not B and not C, and if the bar across the top would be solid, it would be not A, well, it would be not, and then it would be the whole thing A and B and C. It's a different scenario. So just make sure you break those apart. We talk about that more later when we actually get into solving Boolean expressions, which is what these expressions are, Boolean expressions. Personally, I find this to be a little bit easier. In this scenario, they're going to actually give you um, an expression and ask you to fill in the table for it. So notice the input columns here are already filled in. They're binary 0 to 7 filled in for you because there's three inputs. So that'd be 2 to the third. Uh, which would be eight rows there, eight possibilities we have, okay? Now, we only want to fill in uh, the outputs where it matches the scenario given up here. So the first one would be not X and not Y and not Z. So where is that occurring? That's occurring here in the very first row. Oop. Let's fix that. Okay, that's occurring in that very first row. So there's my first one. That's not X. X is off, and Y is off, and Z is off. Or, my next scenario, and this one's a little tricky, you're probably looking at that going, they, they forgot a variable. Well, this is a simplified expression, and we're going to learn how to simplify them a little later. But, this is a, a simplified expression, XZ. Basically, anywhere that X and Z are on at the same time, it should output a 1, is what this is saying. So, if we look through... Uh, there's several cases. Here's one, and here's one, okay? So anytime the X and Z are both ones, this circuit should output a one. And then the last scenario is not X, Y, Z. So it would be a zero in the X column, and a one in the Y, and a one in the Z. So zero, one, one, there's my other one. So guess what happens to all the other ones? They're zeros and the table is complete. All right, now it's your turn, okay? You're gonna take that expression there and you're going to fill in the truth table. See what you guys can come up with. So what I want you to do, pause the video, try it out, see if you get what matches. And this is the answer you should have gotten. Um, make sure again, for like not A, not B, you're marking every single scenario where A and B are both off at the same time. So look right there, see how those are both zero at the same time in those two columns? Anywhere I see that, I'm gonna mark over here, those as one. So keep that in mind as you're looking through the answer here. If you need, pause it for a second before moving on. All right, so now what we're gonna to learn to do is actually create a table given a scenario. 
Um, so in this case, we got a large fuel truck has sensors that monitor temperature and pressure. Both sensors output a logic low if they are within safety safety range. A alarm will sound if either or either sensor indicates an unsafe condition is present. Create a truth table for this logic design. All right, so a fuel tank, a large fuel tank has sensors, uh, monitors pressure. Both sensors output a low, so they're low when they're safe. The alarm will sound when uh, unsafe condition is present. So basically, if either one of them become one, the alarm should sound. And the alarm sounding, according to what they've put down here at the bottom, right here, right here, right here, okay, um, the alarm sounding would be a one, the alarm off would be a zero. So anywhere I see a one down here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a one on the output. So, okay, so my temperature sensor is saying it's unsafe, so there's a one there. I always forget to switch from my highlighter back. Okay, so there's a one. The pressure sensor is reading that it is unsafe. So we have an output of one for my alarm again. And they're both unsafe on this last one. Oh no, uh, watch out. Um, so that's a one there. And then zero and zero up at the top. Everything's good. Everything's happy. The town nearby is safe. All right. And so that would be our truth table for this wonderful scenario. Now it's your turn. So go ahead and read the example here. Well, I'll, re I'll read it to you. How about that? Um, your teacher keeps her, okay, final exams in her office. Uh, for security reasons, she would like you to design an alarm system for her office. That's so nice of her. The office has a window and door that are equipped with sensors that output a one when they are secure, i.e. closed, when the alarm system is turned on with a key, an alarm should sound if either the window or door is unsecure, i.e. open. Okay, so read the assignments down here at the bottom and fill out when you think the alarm will be on and when it will be off given the scenario above. So this is what it should look like if you've done this correctly. First thing, note that the whole top half of this is an output of zero all the way down till right there, okay? Because obviously if the key is not turned arming the system, it won't sound, okay? And so that's why it won't come on at this point. Now looking at the other scenarios down here, and the next one, the, the alarm is armed, but the door and the window are open, so the alarm sounds. Uh, in the next scenario, the door is open, so the alarm sounds. In this one, the window's open, so the alarm sounds. And in the last one, the door and the window are both closed, even though the system is armed. No sound because there's no security risk. All right, well, I had fun making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you ask your teacher, as always. And I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Unless you're Armelli's kids. Then he's looking forward to seeing you in class. Alright, adios.